Hi, I'm Tom Glassman, and I've been photographing for well over 40 years. And I'm here with a few quick tips on how you can immediately start taking better photographs, whether you're an old pro or you're trying to master a new DSLR for the first time, or even if you only shoot with a cell phone. And the way we're going to do this is to look at two or three different photographs and discuss why they work, why they don't, composition, and more. My goal is to get you in and out quickly so you can spend more time shooting and less time watching me. So let's get started. Hi there, welcome back. We are going to be discussing reflections today. And also as part of the main mission for, I guess, the series of, you know, how to, how to see, I want to stress and talk about what caught my eye first and then you go over and look at it, whatever it is it called out to you, and you try and see if you can get a photograph out of the thing. And a lot of times, um, you've seen some other images I've talked about, I'm just driving and I see something out of the corner of my eye. In this case, I was going by the Liberty Tax Office on a Sunday afternoon and their mascot costume was hanging in the window next to a poster. Uh, of the real Statue of Liberty. And you have the two right next to each other. And I just pulled the car over, went into the deserted parking lot and went up to the window. And what you see here, this is the mascot costume in the window next to its counterpart, uh, the photo of the real Statue of Liberty. You have clouds in the background. And it just was this improbable not so much a layering, but uh, things happening next to one another, close association. If you remember, I talked about what I'm always looking for are patterns, layers, colors. And in this case, you had one thing next to something else. And that's what makes the photograph. If I just took a picture of the poster, it wouldn't be interesting. If I just took a picture of the mascot, not that interesting, uh, even if the person were in it during a weekday, waving the thing, trying to get me to do my taxes. But seeing the two together makes a photograph. So in addition to reflections uh, that's going on here, the other thing that's happening and that caught my eye was the improbable juxtaposition of two items or, or things uh, that help to make a photograph. And... In this next image, I was going to a car show and I'm walking onto where the grass is and there were some food trucks. And what you're seeing here and what caught my eye, this is the painting of some large flowers on a food truck being reflected on the hood of a car parked next to it. You can see the windshield wipers here. Again, it was just an interesting image. It was, in, in, for me, I see this thing here and the same thing more or less being repeated here. So it's a close juxtaposition of two similar things that are different and reflective. Also, typically you see a car, you don't see this kind of bright paint job or, or something on an automobile. So again, what stood out, what was interesting was just the vibrant colors and paint going on in, in both places. And okay, this is not where we want to be just yet. So I'm going to go up to, uh, uh, thank you for bearing with me. This is in New Orleans. This is one of their tall skyscrapers and it's reflecting a couple of buildings in the background behind me. And when I frame this, you know, this is what caught my eye. I like this broken pattern, uh, almost like a, uh, not quite a Mondrian, but, but very sort of jagged and uh, pixelated all by itself. And in getting this picture, I wanted the clouds. I saw this old building here. So this would be tack sharp. That would be tack sharp. And you'd have this building here and this building here sort of not so much out of focus, but very distorted. You had several different things going on that sort of make a composite. I happened to see this over the course of a couple days and it worked. I 
kept checking it out when the sun was going to be out and I could, the sun would be behind me reflecting on this and it would make that work. So this is an example of noting something that looks like it has potential for a photograph. If you could be in some place for a couple of days, you go back or keep checking it throughout the day and you can come away with something like this. What I'm going to try and do is bear with me. This is a window in a sushi restaurant. And what, what you're seeing here are this is an open umbrella. These are two umbrellas that are folded up for dining in their al fresco outside dining area. And you can even see the top of a car reflected here. What caught my eye before I even got to the window were the red umbrellas. And it looked like it might have potential. So that's what drew me and up to the window where I was able to see this. And what I want to do is show you some of the uh, shapes and patterns and colors right in here, which are really just interesting. And this was, I took this shot because I had a show coming up with another artist called Maximum Minimal. And the other artist was someone who does photo illustration, uses maybe 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 layers to do something. And he liked my participation in the show because I do everything in the camera with, in one take. And this is what was interesting to me. What you can see also, you know, some of the trees behind me. And, and it was just a fun thing going on. But what caught my eye, what drew me over there was the red umbrellas and the potential for a, something going on there. Um, forging ahead. This was during the Jacksonville, uh, Oregon, Chinese New Year celebration. And this was an image that was in a window. And what you're seeing here is a reflection of the street behind me. And these are some chairs where people would be sitting to watch the parade that was happening in a little while. And I took this shot not knowing what I'd really get, but it was, again, such an improbable juxtaposition of seeing this image very dreamlike with this blue sky and, and so awkwardly placed in the building. And it had nice colors. And this was just walking down the street and seeing it out of the corner of my eye and seeing this sort of uh, ethereal figure with this very down-to-earth sort of ugly urban landscape as part of it. So that's what caught my eye there. This, this next one is kind of complex. This is Portland Headlight in Portland, Maine, South Portland, Maine, I guess. It's one of the most photographed lighthouses in, in the country. And when I got there, it was early morning. I was heading up the coast. And so this is very early. It was an overcast day. There was not great light. I could not get shots of crashing surf and, and breathtaking sunlit lighthouses, or uh, although I've taken it in the fog and at night and um, in snowstorms. But in this case, there was nothing going on that caught my eye. So I started walking around. And what you're looking at here and what I noticed, this is a small outbuilding not attached to the lighthouse. It's beside it. And it's a small building where the gift shop is located. And the window of the gift shop actually was showing the reflection of the lighthouse here. And in the window, you see a little plaque. Uh, it's for sale. You can see the barcode there in the description, but it's a plaque of the, the lighthouse itself and the house. And what this is, is a sort of another silhouette version of the actual lighthouse being reflected or silhouetted in the window. And to me, what was interesting was this duplication uh, going on here. Also, when I took this shot, I made sure that I positioned myself so this shadow was in the center of the window. It wasn't being cut off by the wood here. And I also bent down and shot up. So when you do that, when you tilt the camera up, uh, you get a cascading or pyramiding effect. 
and that mirrored the actual lines of the lighthouse. This is just something, it's like a repeating pattern and effect unless you have it explained to you on its own. It's not a great photograph, but I sure as hell had a lot of fun with it. So uh, that's what's happening there. And remember that I'm always saying, look up, look down. This is in New Orleans. This is a mud puddle. Remember that uh, even mud puddles reflect. And this is reflecting the cathedral in Jackson Square. And I'm looking down and I saw this and I was able to get this shot. Something people do is they carry plastic bottles of water around and you can actually make a puddle to get a reflection of something you'd love to. Or you can uh, do a spritzer and, and like put water on a plant to make it look like it's got dew on it. But in this case, this is a mud puddle and I'm looking down and shooting up. Thank you for bearing with me while I do all these things. This is a toaster in a coffee shop. It was at Christmas time and I was over there getting the napkins and I saw the reflection of the little Christmas trees and then the people there. And what I was thinking in my mind, it was sort of a metaphor where the Christmas time is such a happy time and so many people feel alone or isolated. So here you had these little Christmas trees with people way apart, sort of being isolated. You can even see my yellow jacket reflected in the toaster here. I was actually out shooting in the snow and I came in here to warm up and, and got this shot. But the point here is I wasn't looking for any kind of photograph when I came in here. I saw the reflection in the toaster. I asked if I could come in and take a picture of it and I got this shot. So always keep an eye out for uh, potential photographs wherever you go and especially reflections in the most improbable sections or uh, items. Here's another example looking down in water. What you see are clouds and these are just very tiny bits of rock going into the water. Probably from here to here it's two or three feet but it, it looks Again, it makes an interesting image. So I'm looking down, getting reflections. And and there's going to be a series here that I'll go through kind of quickly. But I was at a local winery and I was, this sort of reminded me of an Andrew Wyeth sort of Norman Rockwell kind of scene where you had an old barn with a shadow of a tree on it. And... I took the shot, you know, I was careful to, to get, leave space here, get the tree, branches, you knew what you were going on. I liked the peeling paint going on. But behind me, because uh, you have to learn to look around you, they had a large canvas event tent with plastic windows in it. And this was sort of a green coordinated, color coordinated support. And these were plastic windows in the tent. And what I was shooting were the little bubbles. And this is a reflection of the sky and that white outbuilding behind me. And I'm just going to go through a lot of, I wonder if I do this. Nope, that won't work. So we'll go back to, uh... here's one of the windows. Again, I just took a bunch. I'll go through quickly here. But um, it's, it's just fun stuff. And uh, another shot, again, the blue is the sky, the white is the building that's going on there. I liked this sort of thing, like I could open mouth really or something. This is the trees and the grass, you know, being reflected. And a little bit of white is the building. Same shot, and this is called working the shot. I took the one I liked, and then I move around and see if I can compose or get anything else out of the same kind of image. This is not as good as the other, but it gives you an example of, you see a shot, take it, then see if there's anything else that you can get out of it. 
here's a case where I'm off to another plastic window and the image is mostly black and white in its reflection. And was, again, fun. Here's another sort of moving in close, taking that same image or another window close by and seeing if you can get something going on in here, uh, another version. This, again, you've got blue sky here, the white barn. And finally, the last one, this is mostly sky reflected, but with all these marvelous little squiggles going on. So I started out looking at a barn. I made sure I looked behind me. I saw the plastic windows. I moved from window to window. Even within the window, I moved around to see if I could get something different. So the moral of the story is look everywhere and uh, have fun, keep shooting, and we'll see you next time. My young computer savvy assistant reminds me that it's really important to ask for likes and subscribes. But I would also love some comments below discussing what we're diving into and what you might want to see in the future. With all that out of the way, thanks for watching and thanks for your patience. See you next episode.